okay fine so uh, without a further due let's start the webinar yes so uh, good morning everyone okay so my uh, my name is Ritik and this webinar is regarding the deep dive into SATs and ACT so basically we're gonna compare about the exams SAT and ACT exam what is the difference between SAT and ACT what is the importance of that how they help into uh, abroad admissions and all and what are the four pillars of you know uh, test pre four pillars of getting abroad abroad studies so what I'll do is uh, I'll be sharing my screen and we'll start with the PPT first for the first 20 to 25 minutes, uh, I'll be explaining you the basics of SATs, ACTs and the process, courses regarding the syllabus, uh, universities and all, exam structure and the marks. Later on, after uh, after five, uh, after 20 to 25 minutes, I'll allow all you guys to ask the questions. So then we can start the Q&A session. Okay. So firstly, uh, let me share my screen. Yeah, some experience are waiting over there. Okay. Well, fine. Uh, Mr. Rahul, can you confirm uh, or anyone, can you confirm if my screen is visible or not? Yes, your screen is visible, sir. Okay. Fine. So I think we are good to start. Yeah. So uh, firstly, let me start with a brief introduction about myself. So uh, I'm the IIT Delhi alumni and I started this Mitra Learning Stars in, at the end of 2020. At the end of 2020, I started Mitra Learning Stars. And the today's webinar topic, if I if we talk about today's webinar topic, so this is deep dive into SATs and ACT. So we're going to discuss about the SAT exam and SAT exam. Okay, fine. So let's go. And so the brief introduction that we started it in August 2020 and we have trained around thousands of students and we have the students from US, Canada, Singapore, Japan, Australia and in India. So basically if I talk about the courses, so courses are split into two parts. One is a test prep, one is a test prep which includes the exams like SATs, ACTs and AP exam and the second one is the academic support so academic support might you might be from cbsc icsc board or gcsc a level o level or maybe from common core so uh, this includes the academic support let's go forward so courses are split into two parts one is a standardized test which is nothing but sat sat and ap exams and the second one is for the academic tutoring academic tutoring includes us common core igcsc uh, ib a level and as level so this is how it is classified okay now let's come on the uh, college preparation uh, how the college preparation work uh, for those who are going to pursue their undergrads so to uh, for the undergrads what we can do is uh, let's kid might be in the grade 9 10 11 and 12 okay so uh, ideally we should start the preparation by the grade 9 itself so that during these four years we can focus on the different different uh, pillars of college preparation and then uh, by the grade 12 will be all good to apply in the top IVY universities or the top universities which we are targeting okay so if I talk about the four pillars the first one is the academics so academics is something which you are learning in the school right so that matters a lot like definitely you should score good into your schools that is the first priority after that the second one is the standardized test which is nothing but SAT, ACT and AP exams. So either you can choose any one out of SAT and ACT and second one if your schools allows you can go for the AP exams. Okay now uh, see what happens in India is in India if you are good in your school academics uh, like let's say in IIT JE exam if you score good then that's all done. If someone has scored maximum in IIT JE exam he will get the I top IIT right but that's not the same with the uh, abroad admissions if we talk about the ivy leagues if we talk about ivy leagues and some other top uh, prestigious institutes so even if you score six, 1600 out of 1600 even if you score full in sat exam that doesn't guarantee you that you will be getting a top uh, college so along with that along with the test prep along with the academics you need to focus on your profile development as well uh, which includes the extracurricular activities uh, you can focus on some extracurricular activities you can focus on uh, in profile building you can focus on some volunteering work 
you can do some volunteering work you can do some internships and you have to show let's say if i'm going for the uh, electrical engineering if i want to pursue my undergrads into electrical engineering then i have to show to the college what makes me driven to get into the electrical engineering so you should have let's say some research paper uh, oriented with that let's say something related with electric current or something related with torque motion something like that or maybe some internship might be free or paid to show that you are actually inclined towards it so that is something will help you to get into the colleges so first one was academics second one is the standardized test and the third one is the profile development now if you go for, if i go for the last one that is the college application process so college application process that it starts let's say if you are in grade 12 if you are in grade 12 then in the grade 12 by the uh, january onwards by the january onwards you can focus on the uh, college application process where you will be writing the sops and lors to get the top college like a statement of purpose letter of recommendation by your uh, call by your schools that to show that okay this uh, kid is good he is good in the academics he is good in the extracurricular activities and all so that way if uh, i classify the abroad admissions then it could be uh, it could it consists of four pillars first one is the academics second one is the test prep third one is the profile development which includes uh writing the essays uh choosing the university of your own choice for that you might go for some counselor or let's say no i'm not interested in going into the counselor then what shall i do there is a website college board website on the college board website itself you can filter out the college even your on your own as well okay so yeah definitely counselor helps but yeah it's something like let's say by the grade 11 by the end of grade 11 you are excited i want to see that uh, for a particular college how much sat marks are required what is the uh, tuition fee of the of the particular university what is the size of the students how many students are there in the university itself so for that you on your own can research on the college board website on the college board website you will be seeing a column of big future okay uh, big future you can go into the uh, on the tab of big future you will be seeing over the college search so by typing on the college search you can even type the name of the particular college uh, or university if you are targeting them or you might search by uh, like by your interest let's say that uh, i have interest in some particular field electrical engineering field so that allows you to filter down them okay uh, so this way i can just classify it into four category uh, four pillars academics test prep profile development and the last one is college application okay moving forward uh, now i'm coming on the digital sat so far what i have explained to you is uh, the four steps which includes into the to get into the top universities to uh, for the abroad admissions so first one was the academics second one was the uh, your test prep third one was uh, academics test prep profile development and the fourth one last one was college application process so now what am i doing is i'm just focusing on this second part for now because the webinar is on sat sat so right now we are focusing on the test prep itself so now i'm focusing on the second part so uh, in that what i'll do is firstly i'll explain you about the sats then later on we will come on the sats okay fine so if i talk about sat see the exam structure so it can it is of two hours and 14 minutes so earlier before march 2023 it was offline pen and paper exam which was of three hours but now onwards uh, like after after january 23 onwards it is just uh, digital sat and the duration of exam is two hours and 14 minutes which i can say uh, around 30, 134 minutes okay if i talk about the sections so it consists of two sections one is the mathematics part one is one part is math second part is reading and writing okay uh, so there are two parts of the SAT, uh, SAT exam one is the math second is reading writing okay these questions are adaptive what do I mean by adaptive so adaptive basically means the level of the question let's say I have five questions in the exam one two three four five okay let's say if I do first question correct my first question is correct then the level of the second question will go up and if I get second question correct then the level of third question will again go up so that is something known as adaptive but let's say on the other hand if some kid goes gets first question wrong okay like first question uh what i mean by wrong like you are not able to attempt it you skip this question then what will happen is the level of the second question will automatically decrease will be uh lower down so that way uh, by uh for each and every student there will be a customized test in which adaptive approach would be followed the level the, the order of the questions will be 
different for the different students okay uh and yeah like most of the university they accept the sat scores in united states and even india in india as well amity ashoka srm they uh, depends on the sat score okay and the last one is if i talk about the exam like what is the purpose of sat exam so it basically helps to understand that what you have learned in your high school during grade 9 10 11 12 so even if i talk about the syllabus of math and english then it almost includes everything of grade 9 10 11 12 okay and by the applications that will help uh, them to understand that what makes you driven to get into the good college okay let's move forward now let's understand how digital asset is different okay so and here it was pen and paper so for pen and paper exam the question the number of questions the order of the question was same for every student and it was definitely it's not possible to make it adaptive yeah for every student it will be uh, like the same paper same number of questions and the same order of the questions so now what they have done is uh, it, they have converted it into digital sat so that is something adaptive exam it consists of only two section instead of four so what i said uh, those two sections are one is of math second is of english okay now for the device even you are allowed to use your own laptop or you might request the laptop from the uh, college board itself but for that if you are requesting from the college board that then you have to uh, request them at least a week ago okay uh, and i hope you know like what is a college board yes so to conduct sat and ap exams ap are advanced placement exam uh, so sats and ap exams are conducted by college board okay sat and ap exams are conducted by college board on the other hand uh, for act there is a different body uh, act is conducted conducted by different body so similar like in india for iit je exam we have iits yes so that way for uh, sat ap exams we have college board and act is conducted by act regulatory body okay definitely you will be seeing the time in your act exam and yeah it's effortless to navigate from the one question to another question and yeah one more thing is what is the difference between indian exams and these standardized exam so in indian exams you will not see the formulas yes you have to mug up all the formulas okay like this is a formula for finding the quadratic root and this is a formula for uh, finding the equation of line met, uh, let's say in the point form or some other form so a slope form but in the sat exam the formulas would be given to you all the math formulas would be readily available at one location and you can access all the formulas so basically what happens is they do not focus on uh, you know mugging up skills like how much you are able to remember the main focus is how much brain you can use over there that is something which uh, plays important role in sat exam okay uh so as i told you that uh, about the digital sat exam the total duration is 2 hours and 14 minutes the total duration is 2 hours and 14 minutes and there is no long reading passages because what happens is on the screen itself you will see the question yes so what you have to do uh you will there will be three four line passages you have to read it out and then you have to attempt the question okay and the next thing is uh there will be more time per question as compared to digital sat as compared to conventional sat so in digital sat you gets more time per question okay fine uh regarding the scores earlier what was happening when it was the conventional sat the scores you were getting the scores after one month okay there was a long time to get the scores but now once the digital sat has started you will get your score just in 10 minutes like uh, sorry in uh, 10 days 7 to 10 days are enough to get the score fine okay now let's talk about the scoring of sat uh anyone so if anyone has any doubt we can discuss those doubt uh, just after finishing the webinar i mean just after finishing this uh, ppt okay the next one is the sat exam is an adaptive exam as i told you the exam is adaptive exam so basically the scoring will depend how many questions you are doing correct okay let's say if you are doing first question correct then the second question would be of higher level and the third question would be of much higher level right so that way uh, the level of the questions will vary right just one sec yeah 
so what i was saying is uh, if you are getting first question correct then the level of second question would go up and the level of third question would be more higher so if you are getting the questions correct then the uh, score will improve okay on the other hand let's say if the first question is tough and you are not able to do it and the second question goes easier and you are able to do it and third question will go little tough out of it so that way depending on the previous question the level of the next question will be decided so that will definitely affect the score if someone is doing the tough questions correct then he will be getting more score as compared to those who are doing the easy questions only okay uh, so basically it's an adaptive exam it consists of the same set of question for all student uh, in stage to the level of question presented by each uh, student is determined by their performance in stage one so as it is two stage exam the second stage uh, the level of the second stage question will depend on the level of first stage question so what will be my first priority my first priority will be to uh, get good uh, good questions uh, like to score maximum in stage one to make maximum number of questions correct in stage one because once in the stage one the question gets correct the level of stage two would be higher and that will help me to get more score as compared to my competitors okay and the last one is scores are limited based on the students performance in stage one so how are you performing in the stage one uh, that will depend to decide that that will decide the level of the stage two question so make sure in the level one you get maximum questions correct okay moving forward if i talk about the reading and writing section i said reading and writing section so uh, there will be some uh, reading passages over there and for each reading passage there will be multiple choice questions which you have to attempt okay if i talk broadly about the sat reading and writing content okay so that consists of four domains okay uh, and again the level of the questions difficulty level of the question will depend on the previous questions which you are getting the correct or incorrect okay so if i talk about the four categories so that includes literature they focus on the literature they focus on history and social sciences history and social science they focus on the humanities and the science so these are the four field which you have to focus on uh, there are so many novels which you should read out and like if you are in grade 9 or maybe in grade 1 then start uh, if you have the habit of reading the novel well and good in case if you don't have go for it it will definitely help you to score good so uh, and what you can do is you can use the field of literature history and social sciences humanities and science so uh, questions are split into these four sections in as I did, reading writing section okay now see uh, as i said that is it is two stage adaptive test design if i talk about the test number of questions then there are total 27 questions what happens is out of 20 uh, 27 question 25 are the operational questions 25 are the operational question and two questions are something to see uh, like what happens is out of 27 question only 25 questions will be marked but you don't know which 25 questions are out of out of the 27 which 25 questions are those which will help me to get a SAT score so what should be your target your target should be uh, should be to attempt all the 27 questions and make the maximum correct out of them so that way they give two additional questions just to see the level of the uh, students if i talk about the time per module so for per module there is 32 minutes and total number of questions will be 54 because in the stage one let's say in stage one itself if you are getting 27 questions then stage two will also be having 27 questions that way you'll be getting total 54 questions okay per module timing was 32 minutes so total time makes it 64 minutes okay uh, now if you are getting 64 minutes and the number of questions are 54 so i can say around 1.2 minutes is allowed for every question okay so this is how the sat reading and writing section works fine now see once the reading and writing is done the second section is of math section now if i talk about the indian students what happens is uh 99% of Indian students they definitely score much better in their math section okay so reading and writing is something where they have to focus more uh, so in math section the, uh, the syllabus of math is divided into four domains uh, four domains the first one is the algebra the first one is algebra second one is the problem solving and data analysis third one is advanced math and fourth one is the geometry okay so this way uh, i can say the sat math section is divided into the four broader categories one is the algebra second one is the problem solving and data analysis third one is the advanced math fourth one is geometry and trigonometry you all know what is geometry and trigonometry right uh, so that is something you all know uh, sometimes like if i talk about problem solving and data analysis so that is nothing but uh, related with statistics you might have heard of mean median and mode 
so that is nothing but that comes under the problem solving and data analysis fine okay and in advanced math they includes the concept like quadratic equations and all and in the algebra they includes mainly linear equation or basically i, I can say finding out the value of x okay so syllabus wise i can say in algebra they includes linear equations inequalities and equation of system and equation system of equation in problem solving and data analysis there will be uh, ratio rates proportion unit rates and one and two variable data which will help you to understand how to find out mean median and more if i talk about advanced uh, math the third section advanced math so that consists of uh, advanced math consists of basically quadratic equations and exponential equation the last one the fourth one which is nothing but geometry and trigonometry geometry and trigonometry that focus on the area volume lines angles and all okay so this is how sat english and sat math syllabus is split up okay once we are good with the syllabus knowledge like what is a syllabus of sat math and sat english we can now jump into the sat exam for sat exam uh, like if i talk about the exam marks structure so 800 marks is of sat math and 800 is of sat english and definitely like if you want to get into the ivy leagues top us universities then you have to score 1500 plus if you scores 1550 plus if your score goes 1550 plus then you are all set but yeah if even if you score 1500 plus then that's also good but make sure at least your score should be 1500 plus out of 16, 1600 in case if you are targeting top 15 or top 20 universities of us okay in that case you have to score at least 1500 plus so let's say if you are uh, targeting top colleges of california or washington or if you are in the east region if you are targeting ivy leagues then you have to score at least 1500 plus okay even in uh, like the last exam uh, of srt that was conducted on may 6 itself so for the may 6 we have got the results already students has scored 780 or 800 out of 800 in the each section like math and english okay now let's come on the second part second exam is act exam act exam okay so if i talk about the difference so we will be understanding the difference between sat and act exam how the syllabus is differ syllabus differs between them how the marks structure uh, difference is there so if i talk about sat and act exam so by the marks wise sat exam as i told you it is of 1600 in act they provides you score of individual section there are total four section and you will be getting scores for individual section which is on the scale of 1 to 36 1 to 36 1 to 36 and 1 to 36 for each subject so there are total four subject and the scores are divided into the on the range of 1 to 36 while on the other hand if i talk about the sat the maximum score for sat is 1600 okay let's move forward so now uh yeah someone has asked the question i'll definitely uh come on your queries for sure let give me 10 to 15 minutes let me let me just finish the ppt i'll come back on your questions okay so if i talk about the act exam ac uh, act and act exam so first comparison i was telling you about the marks so in act it is of 1600 at max in act it is of 36 at max if i talk about the subjects then uh, in act as i told you that two subject math and reading while act exam will be having the four uh, basically four broad division of the subject so i'll explain you that okay and if i talk about popularity then in india sat exam is much more popular as compared to act most of the student goes for sat exam okay fine uh, what about the universities like does it differ for the university as well like do, uh, does universal by the universities uh, does the uh, do they have any preference for sat and act so i can say uh, around 90% of universities around 90% of university accepts both sat and act now remaining 10% of universities uh, so it depends on them they are that they are going for sats and or act score okay one more typical question that students ask is is it mandatory to uh, give sat or act exam in case if i am targeting us university the answer is no i mean 
it's not necessary to give like for example if i want to go into iit jai iit i have to give iit exam right iit jai exam or jai advanced exam but if i want to get into the us university do i have is it compulsory to give sat sat exam the answer is no but what happens is if you have given sat and sat exam it is something complimentary for you and it definitely helps you to uh helps college to uh, college and universities to understand that okay this kid is good in their academics he has done good in his test prep so basically you have one more advantage as compared to other competitors so most of the kids even if i talk about the us in us itself 99% of the uh us uh, students us high schoolers they goes for sat exam even uh what they do is sat exam basically consists of four levels one is psat okay you might have heard of psat psat 8 9 okay the second one is psat 10 the third one is uh psat nmsqt national merit scholarship test nmsqt and the fourth one last one is sat test in india the fourth one is much more popular which is the sat but actually sat suit consist of these four psat 8 comma 9 uh, psat 10 psat nmsqt sat so us students gives all these four exam or like they prefer giving two or three out of them in india itself it's allowed in india psat 8 9 is there psat 10 is there and sat is also there okay so uh, i was talking about the so let's come on the act now so act consist of two hour. the total duration is 2 hours and 55 minutes so i can say the total duration is 175 minute for the exam okay and if i talk about the sections then uh, i can say there are total five section so general aptitude test in verbal and quantitative reasoning and it is accepted in most of the us college actually one section goes for essay so broadly you can say there are total four sections okay the exam primarily focus on measuring the skills uh, like again the same thing what you have learned your in your high school and what makes you driven to get into the good college so that is something sat exams uh, sat exams helps out so number of questions there are total 75 question for each section the duration of is of 45 minutes and the passage is 5 uh, there are total 5 passages so i can say for every passage how much time will be there 45 by 5 so 9 minutes will be getting for every passage and number of questions are 75 so i can say 75 questions are there and the total time given to me is 45 minutes so 45 divided by 75 so i get 36 second per question okay so for every question i am getting 36 second to attempt it now see let's come on some conclusion here what i told uh, told you about sat exam in sat exam you are having around 1.2 minute to attempt each question but in act exam you are just having 36 minutes to attempt each question does it mean that shall i go for sat because it has the higher time per question the answer is no it depends see what happens is the duration of sat each question is uh, in sat for each question you get 1.2 minutes again the level of question in sat is little bit higher as compared to sat exam okay in sat you will be getting much more easier question for example let's say they will uh, give fx equal to 2x plus 5 and they will ask you how much is f of 3 you might not be knowing function but i'm just saying like they replaced x by 3 so 2 times 3 plus 5 that makes it 11 so that type of questions will be asked in sat but in sat they will be having little bit more tricky question for the same question like they might ask you okay uh let's say fx is 2x plus 5 then you have to compare which one is higher f of 5 or f of 9 so i mean the little bit higher level of question is there in the sat as compared to sat so which student should go for the act which student go for sat if someone is interested in solving little bit tougher questions someone is interested in solving more tough questions he can go for sat but if a kid is interested in solving you know uh like easier question and he can handle the time pressure like for that he doesn't worry about he don't worries about the time and he just interested in solving the easier question he can go for the act fine and again i'm telling you in india though act is much more popular as compared to act exam let's move forward okay if i talk about act math section so in math there will be total 60 questions the duration is 60 minutes i can say one minute for each question would be there okay the next one 
SAT reading section. So in reading, you will be getting 40 questions, 35 minutes uh, time would be there and total four passages would be there. And I can say like coming on the conclusion, the total uh, duration for each question will be 52 seconds. Okay, let's move forward. So the next one is after uh, reading, writing English, you can come on the science section. So in science, what happens is passages would be given to you. Like from the passage itself, you have to find out the answers, like what will be the answers for that. So passages will be given. So more or less, it is also a reading type of uh, section, but they have given it the name of science because the, all the passages will be from the science section itself. Okay, so here for each question, you get 52 to 53 minutes, 52 to 53 seconds on an average. Okay let's move forward now i'm discussing about psat so psat is nothing but preset okay as i told you SAT should consist of four exam one uh, first one was psat 8,9 the second one was psat 10 and the third one was psat nmsqt and the last one was uh SAT itself so these four exams SAT should consist of these four exams okay so that's what I'm discussing here. The uh, what is like how does PSAT helps out? So for SAT itself, for SAT exam in a year, six to seven attempts should be there. Like in a year itself, you can attempt SAT exam around six to seven times. Like it is conducted in the month of March. It is conducted in the month of May. The June for the June month that is allowed only in US. So in India again, it comes on the August. October, December, but in total it occurs like even in the June there is attempt in the November itself there is attempt, but some attempts are limited for US students only for international students also they are having around five plus attempts. So number of attempts are there are a lot of number of attempts you can go for. So in a year like there are five attempts. So in four year you can go for 20 attempts like a rough calculation, but see ideally two to three attempts are good enough like maximum you should go for three uh if you scores good in the one attempt first attempt great if you do not score good i mean what i mean by good 1500 plus at least then go for the second attempt okay and the maximum by the third attempt itself you should make sure that you are scoring 1550 plus though it doesn't affect like college board will never send a score of each SAT exam your university will not knowing that how many times you have attempted it but still only two to three attempts are good enough okay so for to see that are you prepared for the SAT exam or not the PSAT exams are conducted so this is preliminary stage which helps a kid to understand which help us to understand okay the kid is good to go for SAT or not even if I talk about uh, exam fee structure then SAT exam consists of only dollar 15 to 20 like uh, you just have to pay dollar 15 to 20 to give PSAT exam but on the other hand I guess for SAT exam it's around dollar 150 plus so there is a lot of fee difference as well okay so I can say PSAT exam. PSAT exam is a shorter and simpler variant of SAT exam. PSAT exam is conducted only once in a year. It's not like that you have to, you can give it five, uh, four to five times. No, only one attempt would be there for PSAT exam in one year. So usually it is in the month of October. Okay. In US, I think it's for two times in the month of October, in the month of March as well. But in India or internationally, it's allowed for the October month. Okay. So typically student take the PSAT, as I told you, PSAT in the grade nine. And for US citizens, this PSAT and MSQ2 is something like National Merit Scholarship Test that they give in grade 11. Okay. So this is about the PSAT. Okay. So, uh, so far, so far, I have discussed about the three exams. One is SAT, second one is the ACT, and for, third one is just, uh, you know, part of SAT, which is nothing but PSAT, okay? If I talk about SAT, the score of SAT is out of 1600, for SAT it is 36, uh, out of 36 for each individual subject. Uh, for PSAT, it's 1440 is also there. If I go in for PSAT 8, 9, 1520 is also there. So it is out of 1440 or 1520. Now, how should I get, uh, how should a kid go for these exams? So in the grade eight, nine or 10, he, uh, he can go during these grades, he can go for the PSAT. 
by the end of grade 10 let's say by the summers of grade 10 he can go for the sat and he can uh, definitely by the grade 11 itself like uh, by the end of 11 itself wrap up the sat and during the grade 12 you can focus on your uh, college application process or maybe like research uh, you know like uh, getting the allo uh, by uh, for sops LOS, you can focus on them by grade 12 so make sure by grade 11 itself by the end of grade 11 or maximum by the summers of grade 11 you are all done with your psats or sats okay same goes for act exam in case if you are going for act exam do finish that by the grand grade 11 itself if i talk about uh, or strategies or features so we are uh, what happens is like our classes are of two types one is one-on-one -on -one batches are there second one is the group small group batches are there there will be five students at max okay uh, definitely there is customized approach as per student requirement because it always starts from the diagnostic test okay uh, which your classes are conducted they will be recorded so you can see the recording in case if your class is missed for the group classes for the one-on-one -on -one classes that is definitely up to you like whenever you will be available class will be conducted as per your availability and teachers availability okay for assessment and we will be providing the test series where you will be seeing your result you can see which section you have got correct where you have committed the mistake and what is the right way to solve those questions uh, advisor or mentor would be there to uh, track your progress to see where you stand to understand uh, which parts of the which part of a particular subject you have to focus on so he will be always in touch with you and anytime you can ask it out in case if you have any doubt during the classes okay so if i talk about the steps so these are the five steps first of all let's say if uh, someone joins us we'll start from the diagnostic test then after diagnostic test depending on the score we put them into a page if they are going for the group class and we goes for the classroom training for every class after each and every class assignment would be provided to them to uh, make sure that whatever they have learned into the class they have applied it their home as well okay later on uh, what happens is like on every week uh, we goes for the unit wise test let's say for uh, week one for week one you have finished linear equations and some passes uh, some science reading section so we'll go for those unit wise tests during the end of first week at last very important thing is the mock test so there, there will be around 10 plus mock tests would be there to make sure that you get a real-time practice for the SAT test okay now see the most uh, the first one the most important point is the diagnostic test like you should always see where you are standing then accordingly make the plan of action yes so diagnostic test for diagnostic test like loads of institutes are there who pro provides the diagnostic test but i'll say college board is the one college board is the one uh, who provide the official practice test 10 sat practice test which is available on the khan academy so khan academy has something tie up or which is uh, with the college board so all the test all the 10 official tests provided by the college board would be present on the khan academy as well even i'll show you uh, that how does it work and from there from the khan academy you can attempt the test and you can even see on your own where you are standing and accordingly you can track your progress so even free resources there so from khan academy you can give the diagnostic test to see how much score you are getting and the base diagnostic test is that one only like in the institutes you might get different different diagnostic tests but the base one is the one who is given by college board itself because they are the one who is conducting the exam so no one can make better than them yeah so best way to give that uh, diagnostic test is the khan academy and even on the khan academy itself you have the you know unit wise practice is there skills practice is there you can go for level one level two level three and level four of practice so in case if you are preparing from the from on your own you can go for the khan academy as well well so yeah this is all from my side about this uh so i think now in case if anyone has any doubt any question feel free to ask uh, whatever questions you have and at the end the contact number is mentioned if you have any doubt you can reach out the contact number as well okay let me come up on the doubt section yeah so when a study exam is conducted in india so that answer uh, you have got already that okay hmm. 
if i get a scholarship how long will a scholarship yeah it last for all four years for sat exam uh, sat exams even the score of sat exam is valid for um five years so like it's not like that in case if you are getting the scholarship for grade 10 then it won't be valid for the grade 12 no after grade 12 no uh, the score of sat exam is valid for whole all five years okay anyone else if have any other question fine well okay if you don't have any question then we can i think we can just uh wind up the webinar yes okay then yeah i'm just waiting for okay what is the scholarship criteria so it depends on the score there are two types uh first one it depends on sat scores as well so there are two types of scholarships there are total two types of scholarship one is the need based scholarship one is the need based scholarship so need based need based scholarship is the one which will depend on your family income let's say if the family income is less than eight lakhs then accordingly they provide this scholarship the second one uh, the second scholarship that depends on your performance your academic performance and all so for that uh, you should have good score on, on your test prep you should have good score in your test prep you should have good score in your academics you should have better profile as compared to others then ultimately university would also like you to have in their university so accordingly they provide the scholarships and those scholarship details are already available on the website and even you can find it out from college board big future as well fine okay so i think doubts are clear yes well okay then uh i'm just ending the webinar in case if anyone has any doubt then they can ask to the contact numbers given in the ppt itself okay uh, uh, that... excuse me sir i had a doubt uh, like yes, if yes. Uh, after like after giving sat uh, and uh, like getting an average score above uh, 13 uh, 1300 like mm -hmm. uh, is there will be will there will uh, be like any entrance exam for colleges or like do we after sat any L other exam also do we need to give for entering yes. into any college see mainly what happens is as it is one of the exam in case if you are available to give ap exams you can go for them as well ap exams are known as advanced placement exams okay so that is something subject wise exam so these are exams you are you can give it in grade 9 grade 10 grade 11 or grade 12 itself and after let's say you are done with your grade 12 and you do not have any other option to give these sat or ap exams no other exams you need to give just you will have to go through the interview process okay and let me quickly share this screen and uh, show you like how this poll works even you can track that just one sec hmm. so once you go on the college board website once you go on the college board website you will be seeing a section of some are waiting over there fine Hmm. So in college board website, you can see uh, there are different different sections are there mainly SAT exam section for SAT as I told you SAT, PSAT, NMSQT, PSAT 10, PSAT 8, 9. These are the four parts. Second one is the AP exam. The details of AP exam you can find out from here. In big future, you can see the college planning and college search and big future scholarships. So scholarship details you can get from here as well for the colleges you can search out from here now let's say if i want to filter out the college in us and depending on the location major you want to choose type you want to go for campus you want to go for let's say as of now my concern is the location and uh it's, it's that let's say i'm going for a particular college into the california so i'll just choose the state california over here and the list of colleges would appear in front of me so you can see in california itself in california state you can see total 276 colleges are there okay let's say in california now again it's not possible for me to apply for 276 colleges so i want to filter out the college of my interest you can filter out from the by the measure itself you can filter out by the affordability itself like let's say how much uh like they are they giving you how much percentage you have to pay let's say 65 percent 
uh, for the application fee are they allowing you to free uh, to apply is there any application where we are offered or not that way you can filter out the college so see now you are left with 37 colleges only going forward let's say i want to choose a particular computer science so i'll go for the computer science and i want to go for these so i'll just filter out the choices from here that way i have filtered out more, uh, more college this is what counselor do like there is nothing more in the counseling let's say you want to go for the four year and let's say if you want to target you are targeting private universities you can go for the private universities and accordingly you can just filter out same way you can go for the campus life uh, like how many students you want in the campus more than 9k or lesser let's say you want to uh, go into the urban area as only that way you have filter out so let's see here uh, for the credits like these AP exams AP exams credit helps out so that is something which I cannot explain in the same webinar itself. So now see what I mean to say is out of 276 colleges, you have filtered out these three colleges. Okay. So once you go to the counselor, that's what they do is that way they are able to filter out the college and they will give you a uh, PDF. Okay. These are the 20 colleges you can target. That way even you can filter out on your own. So I think your the question that you asked was, uh, your question was how does uh, like after the grade 12 once i'm done with the grade 12 do i have to give any other exam no exams are not there just you can go for the nothing like the exam you can go for the interview process which is conducted by the universities and how can i target my colleges that also i have showed you okay any other doubt any other question if anyone have nidhi uh, or tajashvi i or had uh, i had another question uh sir. Please? actually uh my question is uh like is there a mandatory like score for like your uh, 9th 10th 11th and 12th grade that you have to maintain or just by getting like a 1500 plus score or 1550 score in sat or uh, any other in sat exam uh, will that be like waived off or do we need to maintain a proper score in our uh, 9th 10th 11th see that's what i told you in four pillar what was the first one academics so definitely academics is something you need to focus on first of all if I say uh, total 100% so 65 around 60 to 65 percent weightage is of academics only around 15 to 20, 15 percent weightage is of the second one which is the SAT, SAT, AP test, TP score. Third one is the profile building and fourth one is SOPs, LOR. So definitely you have to score good in your school. It's not like IIT J exam that okay your school score is score your school score is not good and you can expect the good colleges now you have to perform good in the school as well so and now let's come on the numbers what i mean by good score so at least let's say if you are going for cbse and all at least you should score uh, i'm talking in the percentage wise so at least it should be 75 percent plus yes sir thank you sir yeah anyone else any question fine okay so by 12 pm i have another meeting as well that's why i'm just uh, wrapping up the webinar okay thank you everyone for joining the webinar bye take care